An environment is a complex community of living organisms, like plants, <laughs> and animals, <laughs> their physical environment, and most importantly, the relationships that are formed between all of them. Everything is balanced and connected in a healthy ecosystem. But what if something in that ecosystem disappears? Or what if something new shows up? That's exactly what happened to the Texas horn lizard. The San Antonio Zoo Center for Conservation and Research has begun a project to reintroduce the Texas horned lizard into areas where it's disappeared. The Texas horned lizard has disappeared from about a third of its historic range in Texas. It's a very distinctive species. They've got a row of five elongate horns on the back of their head, hence the name horned lizard. Sometimes they can be almost red if they're on, on red sands. And they oftentimes have a, a light stripe down the middle of the back and, and little ocelli, like little jaguar spots that help them blend into vegetation and, and leaf litter to escape predators. In this room, we have an insulated, climate-controlled facility that's specifically designed for rearing this species. So we've established what I like to call a lizard factory, where we have about 100 adult breeder lizards. All of our breeder lizards are actually wild caught animals from throughout South Texas. We want to maximize the genetic diversity of our captive population, but we also want to make sure that those lizards aren't going to carry some sort of pathogen or disease that could impact the other lizards there. So we typically quarantine them for a week or more, depending on um, how long it takes to finish all the tests. And we take the eggs that are laid in captivity and incubate those in digital incubators and take the very young hatchlings. They're only about the size of a penny when they hatch and nurture them for about three months, at which point they're big enough that they can take advantage of all the potential prey items that are out in the landscape, and they're also less susceptible to predation themselves. We're fortunate to have a dedicated team of conservation technicians who care for these animals seven days a week. So typically in the morning, each animal receives a a misting of fresh water in the corner of the tank, and that simulates the dew that they would normally drink in the wild. And following that, once the animals have sort of had a time to enjoy their morning coffee, so to speak, um, they're usually provided with food items that can range from harvester ants, that's the, the primary food in the wild, but we also feed them cockroach nymphs, young crickets, and flower beetles. Got a harvester ant mound over here I'd like to show you. Oh, yeah. So you can see it, they, they like to have a pretty large clear area around the main opening of the nest. In fact, there are a bunch of workers oh, yeah. coming out right now. And uh, they maintain this 
uh, open apron around the nest uh, by clipping the roots of grasses and plants that grow in there. So this would have actually been all over here. Yeah, they and they, have, actually done they have to constantly maintain huh. that. Otherwise, the, the roots of these plants are gonna grow into the tunnels in their colony and cause all sorts of problems. In addition to keeping the tunnels clear, um, by killing all the grass around here, they have good sun exposure. So they can help keep the, the nest and the queen and the eggs and the rest of the colony warm. So lizards like harvest ants, they like to have open places where they can sun. Uh, lizards like to show off for each other and there's a lot of social interactions. So yeah. they really want areas where they can have a, a good line of sight, and interact with their neighbors or watch out for predators. And actually the habitat that they've created for the harvester ants seems to be a good habitat for the lizards as well because yeah. they clear out. Yeah, and if there are enough harvest ants, then um, it's, it's sort of a twofer. Yeah. You, know, you have a, a lunch and a spa. <laughs> Interesting. So they're actually living off of, what do they eat in well, this area? Well, harvester ants harvest. So they eat seeds. They eat the seeds of, of grasses and forbs. Workers foraging along foraging trails pretty far out from this mound and they're just going out all day long picking up seeds, bringing them back to the colony. The Texas horned lizard is the state reptile of Texas. It's also a very charismatic species. It's something of an icon of the Southwest and, and Texas in particular. And a lot of Texans have very fond memories of abundant numbers of horned lizards. And uh, when they were children, they, they were wild pets, so to speak, for a lot of people. And those individuals, they're adults, maybe even grandparents now. And they really would like their children and grandchildren to have the same experience of abundant horned lizards that they remember so fondly. We really want to establish populations where they have a good chance of lasting, uh, not just a few years, but forever. By doing this work, the San Antonio Zoo is hoping that this native Texas treasure might once again flourish throughout his historic range, and that he might also help to educate people on the importance that each piece plays in maintaining a thriving ecosystem.